We'll be visiting Asia in our next session called Ecotourism in Asia, a look at a whole new kind of experience. Ecotourism accommodations and tours in Asia have been difficult to track down and find in the past. But sustainable travel expert Masaru Takayama will be giving us a sneak peek into the industry and he'll describe a few experiences that you're probably going to want to add to your wish list. Mr. Masaru Takayama founded Japan Eco Lodge Association, or ECOLA, in 2006. He also founded the Asian Ecotourism Network, AEN, in 2015. He did this to promote nature and community based sustainable tourism in the region by creating a multi stakeholder triple bottom line platform. ECOLA is a multi stakeholder advisory committee member under the 10 YFP Sustainable Tourism Program. It developed the Environmentally Sustainable International Standard, which is recognized to meet the global sustainable tourism criteria. His professional career doesn't end there, though. He owns and operates a rural eco-travel agency called Spirit of Japan Travel. Serving on a number of key positions in the organizations both home and abroad, Masaru has judged on panels for multiple sustainable travel awards and continues to work toward a sustainable future. All right. Well, Masaru, it is wonderful to have you here at the summit. I am so pleased that you're here and, uh, and uh, that you're all the way from Japan. <laughs> you have this beautiful background behind you. Thank you for sharing your home. Um, and I'm really excited to learn more about uh, sustainable travel, specifically in Asia. And um, yeah, learning a little bit more about uh, your background and um, what, your, uh, what your focus is on now. Great. Well, uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for introducing Claire. I'm, my name is Masaru Takayama. Uh, I'm based in Kyoto and other places in the world, although um, my passion is in, in ecotourism uh, since I started in the late 90s. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to get started by um, learning a little bit more about you, and I'd like to learn um, where your travel story began. Where, where, when, did, when and where did you fall in love with travel? Well, um, I'm, I'm Japanese, but I had a great opportunity to learn in the U.S. Uh, since high school and onwards to college. And that really gave me a chance to uh, really travel uh, to other countries. And of course, when I was in the U.S., I was in California. That also gave me a chance to uh, go to Mexico, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just really liked the, f the feeling of uh, discovering other cultures and talking to people. And so I could say that since the uh, well, actually mid '80s, I've been traveling a lot, and um, especially the international uh, destinations, but not only limited to cities, but I really love the uh, finding out the villages and rural areas where the authentic uh, you know, living style and, and the food and so there. Uh, those are the things that I really love. Mm -hmm. So I had a chance to uh, convince one of the major chains in hotels uh, in, based in Japan that gave me an uh, assignment to uh, look through uh, about 50 countries in the world, uh, like hotel hopping and seeing the world and also learning about what kind of hotel program they used to offer. Oh. And uh, so in, in the uh, late 90s, I've been traveling through uh, Latin America. And I have to say, uh, I, when I got to Costa Rica, uh, I was, one weekend I was, diving off the uh, off the boat but uh, I've done that for a few days and I had to take a one day rest which uh, happened to be uh, one of the uh, community based ecotourism so uh, that really struck me as a, as like a lightning uh, the way that this tour was uh, organized the villagers were very happy to take me around they're so proud about uh, talking about the the uh, the hospitals and schools that are developed 
uh, because of the tourists going there and uh, making a very positive uh, differences, uh, contributing financially, but also uh, contributing in kind like labor. Wow. So is that, is that trip what inspired you to get more involved with sustainable travel? Yes. Uh, I didn't know what it was at the very beginning. I was like a regular traveler. I just wanted to see things and uh, finding about new things. But uh, what turns out was it was what we call sustainable tourism now. Uh, in, the, in those days, probably uh, we talked more like a community-based ecotourism, uh, which is a more community-based. Uh, all, all the, uh, the money that the tur- tourists would pay would stay in the village. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the, uh, the money is spent not only for the, for the villagers' uh, earning, but also spent to more public incentives like hospital schools, uh, including the conservation of the park uh, and reserves that they had uh, people to take it to. So I really un- didn't understand the mechanism, how it worked at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. But uh, this guy was really uh, proud about uh, telling me the stories. And that was probably my first uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> occasion to encounter what we call the sustainable tourism now. As much experience as you've had working in the sustainable travel field, um, but also working with tourism in general, um, what impact have you seen travelers have on destinations? Well, uh, destination-wise, that is something that the tourists would choose. Uh, My understanding is if I wanted to go on a travel, I would choose by uh, destination or a travel, uh, the type of activities I would like to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the destination side, uh, there are a lot of impacts that you can make uh, by how you travel. If you find uh, a hotel, for example, that you want to stay in one such destination that is run by you know, family or like mom and pop place, B&B, uh, you know that the money is going to the family. On the other hand, if you're staying in an uh, international hotel chain, uh, you may have uh, a standard of comfort and sort of similarities and the standards that you will look into when you're traveling in out, out other parts of destinations. But uh, the money you're paying for is actually going back to where the companies are set up. Uh, it could be Europe, it could be uh, US or other parts of the world, even though you may be traveling in the third world countries. Interesting. So when uh, an individual comes in and stays at one of these hotels, there's really no knowing how much of that money is trickling down into that local economy. I mean, uh, and a lot of resources from a lot of different hotels, you know, say that most of it, the majority of it, goes back to that home country instead of the the host country. Yes, there are a lot of studies done on this, uh, but I can say fairly, uh, in the really worst case scenario, it could be only like 5% of money uh, only stays with the communities mm-hmm. where uh, really dedicated, responsible and, you know, uh, <laughs> tourism operators and uh, hoteliers, uh, they could have, you know, even 90% of money that stays in the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, so by making a, a good choice, uh, you can make a really uh, big difference in, 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 in the helping the communities. Uh, so not only accommodation, but accommodation is also a big part. In a lot of activities here, also paying to uh, uh, tour operators, uh, they uh, usually uh, calling themselves either responsible tour operators or ecotourism or sustainable tourism, that kind of keywords are something that you may want to look into. And uh, a lot of times the company brochures, that the, the website would say uh, what kind of meals they are providing, uh, is it from the local, you know, organic uh, and locally procured, they will say that on those brochures. So look into those information if you can. Okay, good, good advice. Excellent. Um, so you have a, a special perspective, <laughs> I feel, into uh, the, the travel sphere. Um, you started a, a guide, um, a tour guide company, mm-hmm. and I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, well, um, my company, Spirit of Japan Travel, uh, only does the uh, unique itineraries uh, 
but with the local guys, especially uh, when they are on uh, English speaking guys. Mm -hmm. um, the reason, biggest reason why we do this is because that the local guys would know the local things the best over others. Uh, you can imagine hiring one guy that goes through from one uh, city to another city. The chance is that uh, they may know uh, the major tourist attractions. But for example, if you are in emergency, you need to go to hospital or you need to buy some certain things that you would you know, urgently need it. Uh, the chances is that uh, they may not know that. So uh, that, that would be one reason. Uh, but also, um, you would more enjoy uh, the two, normal tool guys, they would learn things uh, by reading the manual. Uh, mm -hmm. It could be history or culture or a certain years of the time that's been established, architecture, other things. But if you uh, walk with a guide, uh, they would know uh, how they grew up there, what kind of food they like to eat, and on and off the time, uh, their street foods and their uh, gourmet food. Uh, there's certain seasonality uh, in Japan that the scenery would change from one to another. So they would know if you come to a particular season, they would know where the best places to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can't really get uh, other benefits by going with a regular uh, big city city guys I would say. Nice, wonderful. Um, and it sounds like uh, with this, you know, working with gu with local guides only um, format, uh, it sounds like you're filling a gap that, you know, maybe some other larger tour companies are missing um, when they when they hire someone out of the country or someone who is not familiar with the area and does have to rely on a guidebook <laughs> um, to rehearse and <laughs> recite as they're taking people along. Um, were there other gaps uh, in that industry that you were that you were seeing and you wanted to fill with this company? Yes, well, working with the local guys, the biggest challenge I would say is the quality standard. Uh, a lot of times, uh, in the case of Japan, in many parts of Asia, is that they don't speak well enough to really convey the message of what they think is great for the for the tourists. Mm. Uh, so the quality of the language is necessary to the extent that they feel comfortable enough to talk to. But the, I think the passion is the, uh, the most important. And they, the guides also have to enjoy telling them the stories. So um, that will be uh, one thing that I will face some challenges whenever we want to hire new guys. But over time, you know, that issue can overcome. Uh, another filling the gap type of issue, I would say, is that um, uh, <clears throat> if the guys only live in the cities, uh, they don't really know how to enjoy the countryside. Okay. So you know, they would like to stick to the itinerary, but our guys, for example, they, they know where to, they want to go. So we encourage the guys to uh, build their own itinerary that they think is great. And that will really make and unparalleled itinerary uh, that other operators cannot mimic. So that would be a good issue for us to uh, make into those guys. Yes, absolutely. I, I love I love that, especially when guides are, have the freedom to create their own itinerary. And because mm -hmm. you know, so often they're they're from that area and they know all the good stuff to to see and to try and to do. And, uh, and sometimes when you leave it up to, you know, one head honcho who is not as familiar, you, you miss out on so much of that. So that's really, really cool. <laughs> uh, so um, what challenges have you come up against in, um, in building this company and, and, make, and making sure that uh, you are following these set of standards that you have? Yes, well, there are a lot of challenges. Uh, tourism in general, it's very influenced by the social condition. Uh, of course, we have a um, lot of you know, issues with, uh, you know, uh, bad people in a way uh, to be at the wrong place, at the wrong destination, and uh, tourism can be uh, negative uh, in terms of uh, popularity. For example, uh, you've, you know, when we had a, a attack in Bali, for example, no one really went to those Bali, even though it was world destination for a while. 
Mm. Uh, we had two years ago in Nepal, there was an earthquake. And Japan also has a lot of earthquake and tsunami as, as far as you can remember. Mm. So uh, there are a lot of natural causes and human induced incidences that are swayed uh, in tourism. Uh, that's something that we cannot do much. Although uh, by keeping a very small uh, uh, company, uh, because we are a very special interest uh, group oriented uh, travel companies that uh, in the past, luckily we have a lot of clients that, that came to us and they feel really uh, easy to talk to us. Like what's really happening there? Is it okay now? It's like, we'll say, sure, you know, we live here, it's nothing problem. Uh, so if you have kind of established that kind of a relationship, uh, some of the challenges may have been taken out. Mm -hmm. uh, Although, uh, you know, I think we need to be better, uh, better, uh, <clears throat> better to be uh, ready for any kind of incidences like that. Another challenge is that uh, we don't purely market by sustainable tourism or ecotourism, mm. because um, I think to me is um, if people would come and, and go on a tour we would explain why, for example, this facility uses 100% of the wood and bamboo we burn to create uh, hot water in this facility. And after you've seen it, then you say, wow, this is so great, you know, and uh, we would go together to harvest the bamboo, which people like to do anyway, and uh, they will understand the cycle of the sustainability ingrained in the communities. Uh, so those things are something that we would not market at the very upfront, although once uh, the tourists would uh, appreciate what we are trying to achieve over uh, tourism, then uh, I think they will sort of stick to the, our idea. And uh, their, once their mind is changed, I think they'll, change, they'll be changed forever. Interesting. Uh, you're mentioning um, some highlights uh, that maybe people might get to experience on one of your tours. Uh, I wonder if you might be able to guide us through uh, another one of the tours that, that you have in your company. Okay. Um, we have a lot of uh, programs here, although uh, we want to stay as authentic, authentic as possible. We are ecotourism operators, so we do a lot of nature-based uh, soft adventure uh, Japan is considered maybe a more cultural destination or maybe urban destination with anime and uh, high technology. Although we have long history and uh, uh, <clears throat> and culture is still, as you can see, uh, there's uh, it's amazing culture behind us and uh, religions. So uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, windows that we can uh, open to you uh, mm -hmm. if you're interested in any of these aspects. And um, I think what I like to show, like for this property example, uh, let's take uh, food for example. If you like, uh, mm -hmm. if you like, if you hear the foodies. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that the like, sashimi and sushi is going uh, crazy all over the world, but uh, you really have to come to Japan to experience the real authentic sushi experience. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, for example, uh, if you come here and stay with us. Uh, you you will be taken to uh, the fisherman's uh, village, and you will be taken on to a, a fixed net, uh, you know, fishing place with the fishermen. So you are actually observing how they are catching the fish, and this since this is a fixed net, natural nets. Uh, they know what kind of fish that they want to catch and throw all the small ones away, mm -hmm. and uh, you just only get the ones that you like. So you get the fish. And you take that to uh, back to the fish market, and uh, you we would you will also uh, see or help us even to uh, to prepare the fish, and how to slice it thin, and how to make sashimi out of it, and then uh, you would also end up in the dinner table. But you will also learn about our culture, how to eat them, the etiquette, how mm -hmm. the plates are made to uh, to go, you know, to because we do a lot of a uh, good presentation with the plates, so you will learn the whole. Uh, you know, experience about not only the food itself, but also the culture surrounding. Uh, so that would be a one good, uh, responsible, you know, cuisine tour that we do uh, that no one else is actually doing on this island particularly. 
And、uh, if you also want to dress up like us or more like kimono, then you would feel even better.、Uh, then you can really feel like you're living here and not just traveling to. Wow, that sounds so wonderful. <laughs> that is on my list. <laughs>、yeah. Get over there quick. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Thank you for sharing that.、Um, and I'd like to kind of shift focus a little bit from uh, your. Um, You know, part, of your, part of your job as a tour company operator, and then you also are part of a sustainable tourism、um, organization, right? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to learn a little bit more about、um, your role with that and, and how that has helped pr- promote sustainable travel and helped、um, kind of shape the industry over there. Well, I was first、uh, with Japan Ecology Association. I'm the founding. Uh, director of the、uh, non profit organization, which s p e c i a l i z e s in the、uh, promoting and also giving a lot of uh, uh, helping them to seek more sustainability in the hotels and in, in, in the nature based small hotels in Japan.、Uh, that gave me a chance to meet with other NGOs,、uh, especially in the ecotourism industry, over years. And just recently, two years ago, I had a great opportunity from the Thai government that,、uh, that we established a partnership. And now we are based in,、uh, in Bangkok. Our, our office is based there.、Uh, we are an Asian ecotourism network that、uh, comprises、uh, 19 countries and provinces in Asia, Asia and beyond.、Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the board members are coming from Asia and they're born and raised there. And,、uh, We are promoting and also close learning、uh, what, how we are promoting ecotourism, but also we want to、uh, do a lot of action packed projects and we are trying to get evidence based data out of、uh, what we are doing in the industry. So,、uh, those are something that、uh, never happened in the, in the region, especially in Asia. So,、uh, a lot of governments are looking into us, but also at the same time, we're, the benefit of this network is that each country that we have、uh, our hands on have the actual people that can give us the,、uh, you know, the information from the very ground level.、Mm-hmm. So, I think this is a very a unique and uh, very uh, interesting network that we are building.、Uh, we're only two years old, but the experience that we have.、Uh, Each individual has normally 20 years of experience on the board. That will make us,、uh, we have about uh, 23 uh, people on the board. So that's、uh, easily 100 plus years、yes. of experience in the, in the region. So、uh, that's exciting for us. <laughs> wow, that's, that's really great.、Um, is there a part of the, the network and the website where travelers could go and, and learn more about destinations to go travel to or, or how to? Travel in a less impactful way、um, environmentally.、Uh, what kind of resources do you have for travelers? Yes,、uh, if you do just browsing on the internet,、uh, the biggest word is probably responsible tourism nowadays.、Mm-hmm. Okay.、Uh, if you like、uh, nature tur- nature based tourism, I will look into like eco tourism or eco tour.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but we also have our website.、Uh, Asian Ecotourism Network, you can、uh, search it or AsianEcotourism.org. And、uh, we do、uh, now issue、uh, our newsletter. We're we there also on the website. You can look into those、uh, newsletters that we will talk about destinations, sometimes operators. And、uh, those are the good s i t e I will look into. But also at the same time,、uh, this is the very good year for us because it's the UN. United Nations Sustainable Tourism for Development Year. So, the United Nations has a special website、uh, on this Sustainable Tourism Year. So, there are a lot of links, and we are a, lot, a part of the partners. We are actually the multi stakeholder、um, committee members of this、uh, initiative. So,、uh, if you like to go on any site or any, any destination or country,、uh, say if you want to come to Japan, you would search like Japan and Responsible. Tourism or a community base, and、uh, normally look into the website where they have the CSR or、uh, why it makes it different from others. And those kind of the,、uh, statements you would need to look into. Otherwise,、uh, 
sometimes you know, unfortunately we have uh, what we call the greenwashing companies mm -hmm. they tend to look like they are ones but they are not really doing the things uh, because they they think that they can sell it better or maybe for the corporate image they will do that but it's not really happening so doing look into uh, why they do it and mission statement on responsible tourism uh, making uh, improving the wealth of communities, uh, how much money is staying on locally, those things are, uh, uh, I think, tips to uh, look into. Excellent. And, uh, and that's something that we've, uh, we've covered a little bit with some other um, talks in that it's okay to ask questions. I mean, as a traveler, you have a right and, and sometimes even a responsibility to ask these questions and to, and to make sure that um, where you're traveling to is really benefiting from your experience and that you are going to have an authentic and honest experience when you're there. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I know I've heard from a, a few other speakers that they, um, that they look for a story. You know, that, that a lot of these organizations are happy to tell their story and happy to explain why they've taken these choices, um, you know, to be more environmentally sustainable and to work with the local community and to build their lodge to look like, um, you know, other architecture instead of being this, you know, big boxy concrete thing out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so have you found that to be the case as well um, with your organization and that people enjoy telling that story? If we love stories and uh, that would you know make us us you know mm -hmm. um, we have all the stories behind it why we do the things uh, we like the way you know we are conserving the history and culture uh, for the generations to come in order to do that we need to appreciate what we have uh, we need to know the value of what we have but we also need the tourist who can understand what we are trying to do mm -hmm. so without you consumers and tourists uh, we cannot survive as a, as a business that's also a part of a, a sustainability I would say so once all this triple bottom line these the social, you know, social issues environmental issues and economic issues are combined together I think we can make a, a big difference in how you travel and how we operate as a destination and a tour operators right excellent right um, do you have anything else to share with viewers? I, I think I, I've asked a lot of my questions, but um, yeah, if there's anything else you'd like to share, I, I'd love to, to hear it. Well, um, because I'm a Japanese and like to, you know, if you have not been to Japan, that would be, uh, I hope, I'm hoping that you make that in your, not bucket list, but short list. I know that uh, the cost of flying is uh, coming down and uh, you have more diverse uh, programs that you can enjoy anywhere in the world. But if you're uh, climate conscious, uh, please uh, look into uh, like uh, offsetting your uh, carbon footprint that you may be making by flying. Uh, stay longer if you can and not make short trips. Uh, stay in the cozy uh, farming pub places. Uh, try also rural areas, not only urban places. Just, you know, enjoy the world and uh, then I think you're making the tourism as to be a more active industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. And we will appreciate your uh, contribution to that. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Masaru. It was such a pleasure to have you here. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. Yes. Well, thank you, Claire, so much. And I'm very happy to uh, contribute your program whenever uh, you need us. Uh, we are here in Japan and waiting for you. Oh, thank you very much. I know Immersion Travel Magazine is, is looking forward to uh, featuring more amazing destinations in Japan and across Asia as well. <laughs> yeah, just give